If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. What we'll do first is draw a picture of this baseball being hit. So here we have the ball, and because the question notes that it is initially at rest, we can say that the initial velocity of the ball is equal to zero meters per second. And then a bat comes in and hits the ball, giving it some final velocity that we actually don't know yet. Now, the question is asking us for the average force. And so let's take a look at one of the equations that relates average force to the velocities as well as the time interval. And here is that equation. It's known as the impulse momentum theorem. And basically, we have the average force multiplied by the time interval equaling the mass times the change in velocity. Some textbooks will actually write this right-hand side of the equation as delta p, but the way that we have written it is equivalent. Now, we'll notice that we have several of these values. The time interval, delta t, is given to us as 0.10 seconds. The mass of the ball is given as 0.25 kilograms. The initial velocity is 0 meters per second, as noted. But what we're missing is this final velocity here. Without that value, we're not going to be able to calculate the average force. So the question now becomes trying to find this final velocity. And now comes the key to the problem. What we have to understand is that the final velocity after the bat has hit the ball becomes the initial velocity of a projectile motion question in which the ball is hit forward and falls down to the ground level and ends up over here. We'll say that again because that's very important. The final velocity after the bat has hit the ball becomes the initial velocity of a projectile motion question. And so what we're going to do is actually analyze the projectile motion question. We'll find out this initial velocity in that part of the problem and then carry it back and use it as the final velocity for the first part of the problem. So we'll set up the projectile motion aspect and we do want to recall that this height right here is given to us as one meter. So we can label that. Now, whenever you have a projectile motion question, it's a good idea to set up a little table. So let's go ahead over here and do that. Now, perhaps we can fill in some of the y values first in this table. And you'll notice we have the initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, displacement, and time. Now, remember, we're looking at this red colored portion of the problem. And we can see, hopefully, that the initial velocity in the y direction is actually 0 meters per second come back to the picture and notice that the ball initially is not moving downward or upward. And so, in, in essence, it's only moving forward in the x direction. And therefore, the initial velocity in the y direction is zero. Now, the acceleration in the y direction is the result of gravity, and that's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We th next turn to the displacement in the y direction. We've noted that the height is one meter, but because the ball is overall moving downward in this motion, the displacement will be negative one meter, because we have to indicate the direction when it comes to displacement. Now the time interval is unknown for this part of the problem, as is the final velocity in the y direction. We can now turn to the x direction. The initial velocity in the x direction is unknown to us. Remember, that's the whole point of this part of the problem, is to find that initial velocity in the x direction. So for now, we can just label it as v naught. That's what we're looking for. The acceleration in the x direction is 0 meters per second squared. And then the displacement in the x direction would be represented by this right here. And that was given to us in the question as being 20 meters. And it's going to be positive 20 meters because we're moving forward in the x direction. So we'll plug in a 20 here. Now. We also don't know the time interval in the x direction. And technically, since the acceleration is 0, whatever the initial velocity in the x direction is, the final velocity will have the same value. So if we want, we can plug that in. Now, it turns out that in the y direction, we're going to be able to use the information to find the time interval. And to do that, we'll consider the following equation from kinematics. Now, in the y direction, the initial velocity, again, is 0. So 0 times the time with this term here will produce 0. In other words, this will cancel away. The displacement is negative 1 in the y direction. The acceleration is, again, negative 9.8. And then we have t squared here. Now if we multiply the 1 half by the negative 9.8, we get negative 4.9 t squared. We'll divide both sides by negative 4.9. We get about 
0.204 equals t squared, and then we'll take the square root of both sides. And when we do that, we're gonna get about 0.452 seconds is equal to the time in the y direction. Now, the time in the x direction will be the same as it is in all projectile motion questions. So let's fill in the time for the x and y direction. We can next turn to the same equation, but this time in the x direction. And this is going to allow us to find the initial velocity in the x direction. Now the acceleration in the x direction, as noted, was zero, so that's going to eliminate this term. The displacement was 20 meters. The initial velocity is what we're looking for, and then the time we just figured out was 0.452 seconds. Let's divide both sides by 0.452, and we end up with about 44.3 meters per second for the initial velocity in the x direction, so we can go ahead and fill that in here. And it's this number that we needed to solve this problem. Remember, our objective was to find that initial velocity for the projectile motion part of the problem, which we now have to be 44.3 meters per second. That initial velocity in the x direction was the final velocity in the first part of the problem when the bat had hit the ball. So we can actually carry that back now and label it for the first part of our problem. And now that we have that final velocity just after the ball had been hit by the bat, we can go back to our force equation, plug it in and solve for the force. So let's bring that equation back. And so here it is. Remember, we're trying to find the average force, so maybe we can actually divide both sides of the equation by delta t, and that way we have the average force isolated. And then we can plug in the known values. We have the mass of the ball given as 0.25, the final velocity we had finally just figured out to be 44.3, the initial is zero, and then the time interval for when the bat is actually making contact with the ball was 0.10 seconds. So we can plug that in, and then we'll punch this into our calculators to get the answer for the average force. And when you do that, you get about 111 newtons. And so this is the final answer to the question. Thanks for watching. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and then please click the subscribe button so you can stay tuned for similar videos.